It's really heavy. So in episode 11, I said I would be getting this car completely sorted properly. So brand new loom, custom interior, get all of the mechanical jobs that need doing out of the way, get it really good and sorted for the road so that when I do actually uh, get it back on the road, it'll be perfect. But this was banking on the fact that I was going to be moving out in December. That was my plan. I was supposed to be moving out in December to a new place. And uh, yeah, you see, that's not happening because due to circumstances that are quite complicated, so I'm not going to get into them, I'm moving in September. It is currently August. So I have to move out in less than a month. And because of where I'm moving to, I need a car because I need to commute to work. I don't have another car, so I have to somehow get this car roadworthy in less than a month, in like 20 days, and I'm working as well. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Yeah, so I got a major time crunch on my hands. I have to somehow get this car working, roadworthy, sorted out before I move into my new place. Uh, which means that a lot of the jobs that I really wanted to do, I'm now not gonna be able to do until I move. So I've had to pick and choose what really needs doing. So for instance, the interior, I'm not gonna be doing that yet. Sorry, I was really looking forward to that. I actually have everything I need for it now. I'm just gonna to have to wait. Uh, and also the loom. You see, this is uh, due to the COVID situation. Here's the mess of my loom. I have ordered a brand new loom, it's on its way. It's being made by Autosparks, but unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, it's not going to arrive till the middle of September at the earliest, which is about two weeks after I move into my new place. So that's a problem. So I'm gonna to have to fix up this old loom just for a couple of weeks, because I have two weeks off in October, which is when I'm going to do it, fingers crossed. So I have an awful lot to do and not very much time to do it. As the old proverb says, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So what jobs need doing? Well, the next couple of episodes of Project Daily Drive are going to be completely out of order because I'm doing everything kind of at the same time. I need to get the wings off and the grill off and the radiator off so that I can get access to the engine bay and do a few jobs on the engine. Also, I need to repaint the grill, paint this, paint the inner wheel arches with wax oil. Uh, that's a lot. Well, there's no time like the present. I gotta get this off. I'm sick of looking at this red grill. I can't wait to paint it blue. Right, so I gotta take the wings off and I gotta take the grill off. Now you've already seen me take the wings off, so I think we're just gonna time lapse that and then we'll cut back to when I've got the grill so I can show you how that's supposed to come off. Cause I didn't take it off last time because it was kind of fused to the car. It's a new day and now I've got to take the grill off. Now there are 11 bolts that hold it on, two either side at the top and seven at the bottom. And then I also have to disconnect the radiator. So, yay.
Hey! For reference, this doesn't normally happen. This usually is held on to the inner bit by a bunch of trim, but mine's missing because I told them not to put it back together properly because I was going to take it off. So we've got the inner part of the grill here, which is what the radiator attaches to. It's only held on by the top two bolts. It's actually just about to come off. Now I've not detached it yet because I need to detach the radiator, the top hose and bottom hose. Now there shouldn't be any coolant in here, but I'm going to get a bucket just in case. So yeah, let's uh, get that off. Okay, I'm sorry about the lighting. I can't tell the sun to stop. Okay, so here is the inner part of the grill. Let me lift it up for you. It's been in the sun, so it's a, a whimsy hot. So this is the inner part of the grill, not the front bit. This holds the radiator on and also contains the bonnet opening mechanism. Now, I need to strip this back down. You see, when this car went to Morris Millennium, what they did was they stripped this back to bare metal for me and also they fixed up a bit where it had cracked. It actually, uh, there, it had cracked. So they fixed it up and they welded on a new plate at the bottom. So this is a really good piece. Uh, I think I've got a delivery actually. <laughs> Bugger, hang on. I did have a delivery. Yeah, that's uh, some bolts and stuff for the car. As you can see, I'm running very short on time. Anyway, I've got to strip this thing down. Now, there's a couple of things that needs to be done to this. Uh, so we'll be revisiting it in the future. I need to get the mechanism off so I can paint it because it's all bare metal at the moment. And as you can see, in the few weeks it's been on the car in the rain, it has flash rusted. So the paint that I've got is designed to be painted on top of rust and it kills it dead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand this back just to get rid of all the big flaky stuff, clean it off. I'm going to remove the mechanism to open the bonnet which is a bunch of split pins. I need to get some split pins. And then we're going to paint this all up so that it's not going to rust. Because <sighs> I'm sick of rust. Uh, and then we've got to paint the grill. So that should be fun. Oh boy. It is 30 plus degrees right now. And I am fat and very pale. I don't do well in this heat. Next order of business, because oh, I've got so many jobs to do. Uh, here is the fuel system. Now, allow me to tell you the one part of the fuel system which has been changed since the car was on the road. Uh, there... Oh, try again. So, the next order of business. This is the fuel system. Dead simple. Now, let me talk about one thing that has been changed on it since Gene was last on the road. Uh, a brand new solid copper fuel line has been put in. I don't know if you can see it so easily there, because when the car went to Morris Millennium, they put it up on a ramp and realised that there was actually two hoses. Uh, it should be solid copper all the way through, but at some point along the line, somebody put a braided hose halfway through. 
not only is this hilariously dangerous, it was leaking. So it's been changed to a solid copper fuel line all the way along, which is brilliant. But it does mean that I have to tackle the rest of the fuel system. So the hose that comes from the pump to the carburetor is a bit of a problem. The fuel pump's been serviced not too long ago, so I'm not worried about that. But this is a problem because there's no filter on it. I have a filter right here. Didn't come out of the factory with a fuel filter, which wasn't so much of a problem when the car was brand new, but 50 odd years down the line and all the crud that's in the fuel tank does make it a problem. I ran out of fuel in this car once and it didn't run right for a month, so I need to put a fuel filter in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this hose actually underneath the wiper motor and tie the fuel filter here to the side of the engine bay, far away from the heat of the exhaust because that's another problem. Because the intake and outtake are on the same side of the engine, the heat from the exhaust causes a problem known as fuel evaporation, where it heats up the fuel so much it vaporizes before it gets into the engine and the engine starved of fuel. So I have a Mr. Grumpy's heat shield, which I'm going to attach to the carburetor float bowl and also the upright here, which should, fingers crossed, prevent that from happening to me in the future because when this car was brand new there wasn't much traffic on the roads but nowadays traffic is very common and when you sat in traffic for a long period of time the engine looked like it. So without further ado let's get this hose off and get the new hose and pump, well not pump, filter in. Oh boy. Okay so I've temporarily installed the fuel hose just so you can see what I'm going for here. Whereas the old one was straight across from here in the kind of hot zone of the engine, this one wraps around out of the way where it's nice and cool. Now I should mention, I'm not running it behind this little tie plate here because this has got sharp edges and over time the vibrations would wear through this fuel hose and cause a leak. By running it behind the actual uh, wiper motor itself, it's got nice rounded corners on the castings which means that it's not going to get cut away over time. There's nothing sharp to basically wear it away. Now the fuel filter is going to be fitted right here, well, like that. So this is going to filter all of the particulate from the engine. Uh, now the fuel hose needs to be cut a bit shorter because right now it's a bit too loose and wobbles around. It won't be tight enough that it won't move too much, but loose enough that it's not pressed up against metal constantly. And then I'm going to use some ties just to hold it in place. What I really want to do in the future is put some angle hoses uh, to help run the fuel line a bit better and also make an actual mounting point for the fuel hose here so it's not just kind of tucked behind the motor which will make it just a bit ha better for me and I'll be a bit happy with it but this is actually the fuel hose arrangement that my car has had since I bought it. Somebody else did this so I'm just copying it should be nice and simple but I need to cut the hose in half, trim it down and then we'll come back when it's fitted so you can have a look at it. Okay here we go, this is the fuel hose in properly so what we've got here is comes out of here round to the side where this is going to be attached up properly. I am going to put some Jubilee clips on, I just don't have any at the moment uh, so Jubilee clip this all and then just put some cable ties just to make sure it sits right. In the future, like I said, I want to fit some angle pieces. So this ang an angle piece going this way, an angle piece going this way, and then have some better hoses that I'll actually attach with its own mounting point onto the side of the body there, so it'll be much nicer looking. But for now, this should be fine. Uh, now we need to go and do the uh, heat shield, which is another thing unto its own, because I kind of need that to get the, uh, to stop it from overheating. The hair sticking out here at the sides really makes me look like I'm in my 40s uh, and trying to cover up a bald spot when the actual reality is I just have too much hair. Oh, I need a haircut. Anyway, so let's talk about an upgrade to the car. Now, I wanted to dedicate its own video to doing the fuel system, but I've run out of time, so it's just going to be thrown into this one. This and this are what's known as a Mr. Grumpy's heat shield. Mr. Grumpy is a... Uh, brand that makes a lot of what you might call the series three upgrades on the car as well as a lot of other classic cars just things that make the car work better in the modern day and they're just heat shields so what they do is this attaches to the uh, body to protect the upright fuel line from the fuel tank from the heat of the engine and this one 
goes over the carburetor float bowl and protects the carburetor float bowl from the heat of the exhaust because both of them get really hot causing fuel evaporation which means that the engine gets starved of fuel. Now to fit them, dead simple. This just bolts on top of the carburetor with some longer bolts and this just bolts onto the body in some unused mounting points. It couldn't be more simple really. So let's get fitted. Okay, so first part to go in is the upright. Now this bolts in, there's these two unused holes in the car that it bolts into. Now I did have to fettle it a bit off screen because it was actually fouling the fuel line, but it doesn't do that anymore. So let's get the bolts, which are quite chunky boys actually, these ones. Hopefully I've got this at the good camera angle so you can actually see what I'm doing. The problem with working in the engine bay is I haven't got any lighting so I can't really show it properly. I need three hands to do this. I hope I'm not in front of the lens too much. Right, next order of business, I've got to paint the inner wheel arches because there's some bare metal uh, which is flash rusted over and I'm just going to paint it in hammerite, uh, just sand down the rusty bits, paint it in hammerite. Now I would show you this, but that's painting, which is, well it's painting in it, so uh, instead of that I'm just going to be lazy and... <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set the tappets on the car. Now I'm only going to show you one because it's the exact same process all the way through. But let me just explain what you need to do. To set the correct height on the valves, you need to adjust it by what's called the rule of nine. What that means is you need to find two valves that equal nine. And when, the, when one of them is open fully, the other one can be adjusted. So for instance, one and eight, one's fully open, so you can adjust eight. With two and seven, three and six, four and five, etc. So that's how it works. So we are going to be tackling valve number seven. So what we need to do is get valve number three fully down. Obviously it already is, but let's pretend I got it wrong. So I've got to turn the engine over by hand. It's not quite as easy as it sounds because it's quite hefty. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but valve three is about to move. So, oh no, it's valve four that's about to move. I was wrong. Keep an eye on there. Valve three, there we go. So that's moved. What we need to do is get valve three as low as possible. There. That's it. Right. Hello there, I'm nearly there, just those last fiddly jobs. Gonna set the tappets. This is a lovely fiddly job that involves feel again. <laughs> when you've dug one of these out, you know it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, it's nearly done actually. I've just gotta repaint the grill, put that on, put the wings on, get the lights on, put the carpet in and the heater in, and that's it. And I just need two bolts, and I can't find these bolts anywhere because nobody's got them in. <laughs> I need two imperial bolts that are a funny size. So I've got, I've got some... I've got some coming in the post. It'll arrive hopefully tomorrow. But that's all I need. I've, I've done everything now. I'm just putting it all back together very slowly. Sense of achievement. Yes. I know. 
Oh, don't worry, there's plenty more jobs to do. Yeah. It's, no, it's never going to be finished. <laughs> it's like painting the fourth road bridge. <laughs> See you now. Okay. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to loosen that nut. So the way it works, if I get the feeler gauge, let me just explain. So this feeler gauge should be able to fit underneath here, and it doesn't. So there's, that's a problem because it's too low. So what I need to do is adjust it so that I can get the feeler gauge under there. So what I've got here is a lock nut, which I just need to loosen off. And whoever did this before me did it really well, uh, to the point that I really need to put some force into these to get them to open. And I don't want to put too much force in and slam my hand into something and cut myself. Also, don't do this with an adjustable spanner. I just don't have any other spanners that would work for it. Oh, bother and rounding that nut. There we go. So that's loosened off. God, somebody's really talked them down. Right. Now let me show you how it works. Using, I've put it somewhere, there's a screwdriver. Ah, I've nearly sat on it. Using this slot in here, you have to adjust this so that you can fit a 0.12 uh, feeler gauge or in metric a 0.305 mil feeler into here. That's too tight. Basically, you want it to just barely have resistance and no tighter. And then you just put pressure. And then tighten the nut. OK, now it's good to check. Yep, that's. I've accidentally let the screw move, so it's perfect. There we go. Let's just make sure that's really nice and tight. You don't want this coming loose. And that's that done. So repeat that for every single valve. It takes forever. Okay, so I've lost all of the audio for this, as you can plainly see. So what am I talking about here? That thing I'm holding in my hand is called a bump stop. And it's a rubber cone that sits on the body above the suspension, as you can see where I'm moving my hand. Uh, and this basically stops the suspension from slamming into the metal when it reaches its peak, when you hit a speed bump or something like that. Both of mine are missing. One snapped off from just a base plate left, and the other one just doesn't even have one. So I need to replace them with the new ones that I've got. Unfortunately, underneath where they attach is actually quite rusted and corroded. So in the future, I'm going to go back and I'm going to weld in some new metal there to make it nice and solid. But for right now, I need to bolt in the brand new bump stops, uh, which should stop the suspension from slamming into the body. So we're back on the uh, little camera, which is why the audio is not great. You obviously already know uh, what happened, but I just found it out, so I'm really mad. So I've got here, this looks like the old grill from a distance. It's not, it's the red one. I've repainted it. I'm sorry I didn't film it, but I don't find filming painting particularly interesting. But also, I just found out that my camera hadn't been recording audio for the past three days of work I've done on this car and I wasn't in the mood to film anything. I was really mad. <laughs> but it's fine. I'm going to film putting this on now. Now the problem I've got here is I'm going to have to require an awful lot of fettling. So I'm just going to do some editing magic. The grill's back on. 
looking blue for the first time in a while. Now, I'd like to pretend and say I'm sorry that I didn't film it, but honestly, you've just been looking at about half an hour of... <sighs> so it's not really... Nah. I've got to get the wings on now, and that's my last job for today, hopefully. Better be. Okay, now I've got to put on the wings. Once again, you've seen me take them off. It's not interesting, so uh, let's do some editing magic once again. Ta-da! The wings on. It's now quite late and I'm very tired. So, we're going to cut back when the other wing's on. Because you'll notice handy dandy it's just out of frame, it's not on. So, we do that and then we can go over doing the lights. For reference, I'm not even going to try and make this wing look good, it's shot. Like, it's really bad. My plan is to get a full set of heritage wings for this car one day. Here is my car's carpets, and as you can plainly see, they're horrible. They're awful, and I hate them. But I'm going to have to put them in the car. Now, I've got in the house a nice, lovely very very thick lush uh brand new carpet roll i'm going to be turning it into the car's carpets and i would i would drive the car around without carpets but i did that for a month before i took it off the road and the noise is biblical so loud that you get a headache after five minutes so i'm going to put them in just purely for sound deadening they they won't clean up they're just shot they're threadbare so i'm going to put them in i'd film it but it's starting to rain so yeah. Okay, fuel's primed, we've got fuel in the tank, the sender is moving, we're in neutral, choke out a bit, will she start? Ooh. Come on. Not, not sounding happy. Oh, nope, lost it. Nope. Really rich. Oh dear. She lives! And she smells really bad. My camera seemed to have run out of battery. Smells very, very rich. Ta-da! Today is the 28th of August, 2020. Over 10 months since I uh, took this car off the road. She's done. She's finished. Except for one or two tiny issues, but she's drivable. She's taxed, insured, not MOT'd yet. I will get an MOT at some point. But she is done. Everything that needs to work, works. She runs. I am now going to, for the first time in 10 months, take Jean out on the roads. I am so excited. It's been 10 months of work from myself, two months of work from the fantastic people at Morris Millennium and everybody else who supported me along the way. Now it is time to take a 54 year old car that has been restored back on the road.
Turn around. Let's use this guy's driveway, he won't mind. Snow in. Yeah, hit the curb, it's fine. <laughs> I think she works. <laughs> right. The wipers are working. It's time to go on our first proper test drive. Now, my dad is tailing behind us in a car just to make sure that uh, everything's working. So, right. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> it's been 10 months since I've driven. But, ah. Oh. Honestly, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> All right, let's go down Sherwell. Oh, it's bumpy. She's finished. She's back on the road. In fact, she's been back on the road for about a month. Between the last time you saw me and now, uh, an awful lot's happened. But Jean's been back on the road for about a month. You can tell because not only has my beard gotten a bit wiry, but also my hair is long enough to stick in a bun. This isn't a fashion statement, I've lost my beard trimmer and I don't know if the barbers are open because we just entered tier 3. I really need a haircut. But regardless, Jean's been back on the road and I'd love to say that it has been a month of blissful motoring, problems free and I've been to some wonderful locations in my car, but no. 
No. Anyone that's ever restored a car will tell you that it's never that easy. Never. And there has been quite a number of issues that I've had. And I will get into them, but this video's gone on long enough, and frankly, I am very tired. I have been doing nothing but work on my car, or move into this place. I've just moved into my new gaff. Um, we're studying my workshop. We're going to get into that more uh, another time. But these past two months have been very stressful because I've not only been working non-stop on my car, I've also been working non-stop moving into this house or just plain working at my job because I have a real person job. Yay. So I think I'm going to have to call it here and next episode we can get into all of the lovely little problems that have been keeping me awake at night. Speaking of, there's something I really need to catch up on.